I did not touch it. I made an, I made a very specific effort to not to change those. Um, and then what I was going to say is, but I have been learning in my dreams and they all come from very intense, like visions where it's like, um, you need to write this right now kind of thing. Um, and so I do, I, I write it out and I, I typically write the entire book with including drawings and everything in one to two sittings. Um, and then send it straight to printing. Now, are do you have a a teacher in this dream state? Are you seeing the manifestation of something they're teaching? You're smiling, so there. Am I hitting on something there? How many? I don't think going? anyone's ever really asked me that. Um, there, there is master's orders. Yeah, I mean, it, like if you want to be like realistic about that, um, the very first time, not, it's not master's orders. It's you could say it's a guide, a meditation guide, um, and it, it, it's different. It's changed throughout time, uh, meaning my lifetime. The very first time you could say I had one, I was about the age of ten, and that was uh, literally a gray being came out in front of me and held up both of its hands and taught me the delusions of mankind. I uh, said, so we put the rocks where they are. We put the trees where they are. We put the concrete where it is. We create all the philosophies we follow. Um, we create with our wants, don't wants, assumptions, and expectations. We create the physical reality that we experience. These are the delusions of mankind. Uh, mankind is in a state of delusion, like where they think they're things. Like, for example, um, I think I'm a doctor. I'm not, I mean, just an example. Like, I think I'm a construction worker. I think I am this thing. Um, we're in reality, we're all humans that are on earth, right? And then we have all these things that we, I am, and we do, and we try to project onto others. And you could say society is in a very delusional state because you have the most raw experience again, which is, you know, consciousness field of energy in the, in the physical realm, we have the most raw experience human on earth, right? Everything else is, is somewhat um, of a delusion. Like we're born into these different fractals of delusion. Like I was born in Cape Town, South Africa during the apartheid. Um, I don't know where you were born. I'm just guessing in the U.S. somewhere. Right? Michigan, yeah. <laughs> right, right, Michigan. Someone else was born in a different country and someone else was born in a different country. And those are all different flows of space that I'm not saying that they're wrong by any means or anything like that, but they're different fractals of experience. Um, and they're different flows of space. So there's all these different flows of space that have been created by man over time. Um, and so I was shown all that, right? And basically I was removed of it. It was removed of delusion at the age of 10 and I was taught to never pick up any of them again. So stay free of delusion your entire life was, was the, one of the main challenges. Um, so go learn stuff. Yeah, go learn science, learn what people say. He says this. And so it's always like, that's what they say or that's what they think. But that's not really my reality. Um, if I want to get an A on the test, I, I put these answers and I get the A. You know, I passed the test, I got an A. But that's not the truth. That's not really reality. Um, that's reality inside of a delusion. Exactly. Exactly. And getting the accepted grade, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so then are we... Are we animals having a spiritual experience or are we spirits having an animal experience? Science says animals are beings that reproduce, right? I mean, we have, we don't have cell walls, apparently. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, so animals, yeah. are, that's, that's a human definition of animal. Um, so that would be a delusion. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to describe uh, so I would just say that we're all spiritual beings and everything is a spiritual create. like when it comes to the space of the in between my atoms I mean you see point zero 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 one percent maybe of the energy that literally creates me it's, it's coming from the denser realms of experience and the less dense realms of experience the past and the future um, I would say we're more, more a being of spirit than we are a being of flesh and bone as far as percentage of the body, right? That actually makes you, uh, the physical you experience is just like a tiny little sliver of it. Where does meditation fit in on this? Uh, so meditation is important. Um, so once you remove delusion, you can say that you're at your golden spot, right? Because a being that's holding a posture, meaning a want, a don't want assumption expectation is basically like, Imagine a smooth pond of energy that is the universe. And then every time you have a want, it's like throwing a stone into it or a pebble. And it sends out these ripples, right? And so now if I'm here and you're over there and we're both throwing stones into this universe, it sends out ripples and they overlap with each other. Um, they create distortions in the field. 
add three people now you have three sets of ripples coming towards each other but like so a being without delusion literally doesn't create ripples in space time um they can almost be considered invisible like the only ideally the only thing you should see of me is my physical and i shouldn't leave a trace it's almost like leave no trace behind um I'm getting distracted. So as far as meditation, we all get kind of filled with, and our posture solidify. Like, for example, if, can I uh, open up a different book here for this section? Sure. Yeah. This is, uh, so this is called The Physics of Love, and this comes from the infinite pool of experience and awareness. Um, and basically, it's applications of the book, applications of the theory. So um, I, I find it's good to show this for when it comes to meditation questions, because it has a lot of good visuals. So if you have a, a, a smooth field of energy, right, right here, say this is a uniform field of energy, and we're accelerating towards center at light speed while orbiting, we get something called the now moment, which looks like this, right? So we kind of already went over that. Um, but so what we also need to realize is that we have something called the golden spot which would be your creation if you didn't have any wants, don't wants, assumptions, or expectations. It's like you're, you're perfectly being focused from the natural nodes of manifestation. And every time, you know, like we mentioned, you have a want, don't want, assumption, or expectation, it creates a shift. Um, outside thought comes in, literally changes your heart, harmonization, your vibratory field changes because you've accepted a new thought. So now when you think about all the energies that are overlapping, it creates a shift in node. Um, and, you literally have a spiral back to and from your golden spot as thoughts dissolve away from being part of your harmony. Um, and so when it comes to a lifetime of existing within the fluid of time, you can say that we create structures as we evolve or have different experiences within our life. And so you can say you're born at the silver spot and then you have to go to school, which is like one of these green spirals. And before you can actually continue to evolve as a, a, a fully developing human, you have to conquer the delusion of going to school. Um, and so, so this branch out here is like a really big branch. That, that comes a lot of my students right now are nodding their heads going, yes, <laughs> so yes, get us out of school. <laughs> <laughs> no, and so that's why it's, it's challenging to present. You have to present this in a, in a way that is not, you know, that's still people understand, but aren't like offended. Right. Because I, I went through school. I went through the whole trying really hard to get a patent, sell a product. I'm going to make money and I'm going to be successful. Like, Oh my God, come on. That's the biggest joke ever. So like, um, this could be someone that's caught into a fractal of delusion, right? So like literally they're, they're evolving. And then all of a sudden they, they join a religious Institute or a militaristic infrastructure, right? So then now they've dedicated to this life of human creation that they then have to complete before they can continue to actually connect to the universe and evolve further. Um, and so you can say that someone that doesn't ever reach their golden spot basically has this type of manifestation. And when you consider reincarnating beings, um, you could consider that they have, because you have densities of creation, and as you reincarnate, you're further and further inward. So when it comes to reincarnated beings, basically you end up with something like this, which is super rusty. It makes a, a bad electrical wire, bad electrical connections. But then you could say that someone like the Dalai Lama, who has manifested and created from their golden spot at all times, has something more like this going on in their lives, um, to where this is the structure they make when they re reincarnate. And so they can actually pass information through the different densities of experience through all the different lives. Um, and so when it comes to meditation, for me, it has a lot to do with always being at the golden spot, returning to the golden spot, and getting other people to go to their golden spot. And so it has to do with healing, with posture control. Um, and what I mean by that is healing with your mind, body, spirit diagram, because there's different spirals of creation. Like we were talking about this earlier, like if you're born into a country of Russia or you're born into the country of Ukraine or the United States or China, every one of these is a different flow of space. They're all gonna be disconnected from the greatest flow of reality. Like say this could even be the military industrial complex or a religious institute or school. Whenever you take a posture of I am something, like I am a doctor, I am, um, from your example, a, a teacher, right? Uh, in my example, um, an artist, you know, that's, or an inventor or a designer, or, you know, you know like they're all IMs and they become limiting and they become your line of sight. 
And your line of sight is literally how far into time, into conscious experience you can see. Um, and the easiest way to see it is to look at the spiral of a drug addict because their line of sight is a 30 minute spiral. Um, and so it's easy for someone who's in a bigger spiral to look into someone who's in a tighter spiral and say, oh, he's just, you know, he's addicted to his drugs. And then um, as you remove your field of view, so you can say, oh, well, he's just going to his job for the day. So that's why he's standing behind the counter and doing his things. He's in that spiral of creation. So as you remove your delusions, your line of sight gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and you can see into the spirals of others. For example, you know, all the Russians, and it becomes apparent right now, like they're all being hypnotized by their propaganda, right? They have a very specific propaganda right now out there that says certain things. Uh, the United States also has a very certain propaganda that's saying very certain things. But all of those are disconnected from the greatest flow of reality, which is the earth, the sun, and the human spirit. Um, those are all creations of man, you know, in their little flows of space. So, so if somebody tries to get to that golden spot, what is it like when you get there? What What is revealed? All is revealed. Like, um, you, your line of sight increases to the beginning of time to the end of time. Um and anything you want, don't want, assume or ex expect will be created. And so one extremely important thing to do before you get to your golden spot is remove your don't wants. Because if you're a person who's holding on to a lot of don't wants, or at least has one, the, the second it comes into mind, it will be man manifest. It's almost like um, when Jesus says, don't look at the water. Like when you're walking on the water, don't look at it. Don't worry about it. Walk on the water. Just don't look at it. Uh, well, here's a here's a perfect example just today i didn't want the power to give us issues because we're having rainstorms up here the don't want. <laughs> and, and there was my don't want and i yeah. don't want the power to go out on us and about 25 minutes in people <laughs> guess what happened the power went out <laughs> so yeah. there you go yeah so I, I call that your golden spot and so that's one aspect of the whole meditation thing um but you asked, um, so as far as like my goal through meditation is to learn to basically walk up to someone and just tap them on the forehead and have them be straight at their golden spot. Um, that's the lesson I've been learning lately in my dreams is how to basically tap someone on the forehead and send them straight back to their golden spot. Um, now, you had mentioned reincarnation. Is, is reincarnation something that fits within your theory? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's all it's all energy, right? What am I? Like, at the end of the day, what? Like, I'm asking you in a way, what What am I? What are you? I'm, what do, I mean, what are you? We're, we're energy moving at a certain frequency. Right. I mean, that's at the end of the day, like, at the most simple explanation it's energy and the way i like to spin it from this model it's energy orbiting and drifting inward um and just natural wave nature talking about overlapping of energy and um even just waves in an ocean and you know interference patterns um you 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 don't exist right so imagine that's a flat, a flat line and then you exist so you pop into existence and then you pass away you don't exist and then you exist and then you pass away. So the way I see it in this drawing is as our universe, experience of the universe drifts inwards along that habitable spiral, um, you, we're literally blipping in and out of solidity with our different lives. Um, and so this is like one life. This would be your next life, your next life, your next life, your next life. And they just kind of blip in and out, blip in and out. Um, but then there's also, so that's, uh, reincarnation on a short time scale all within universe meaning our, meaning our layer of reality right all within universe um, but if you think about all of time there's dimensional alignments like what we were talking about where every 2178 2000 years ish our experience gets tugged outward the whole experience gets tugged outwards and so different beings reincarnate into the field of energy Right. So 2000 years ago, basically, uh, we had a Jesus Christ guy kind of come into experience. Right. Sure. And so and from my understanding, there's basically a great potential for the reemergence of a Christ like consciousness within the next hundred years um, based off of that tugging and the dimensional alignments. 
So that's what I have here is converging and diverging timelines. 